Okay, this will be um, our fourth video on uh, pain medications, and we're going to talk about the acute overdose of NSAIDs because we just talked about the acute overdose of aspirin, and it's similar to salicylic or aspirin overdose, but not quite as severe. I think more most people take NSAIDs anyway, but uh, some people take like aspirin to lower their platelets. Um, and you can read through these. They're very similar. You can see the vomiting GI bleed is still here. Intense headache, dizziness, uh, cerebral edema, cardiac arrest, and death have been reported. So again, just because it's an NSAID and you can buy it over the counter does not mean you cannot overdose um, with it. Okay, we're going to look at some more profiles that help with pain. Our indomethacin or indocin is an analgesic, so it's a pain medication, an anti-inflammatory. It's usually used for anti-rheumatic and anti, uh, more anti-rheumatic than anything, but it does have antipyretic properties also. And here it is, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, acute bursitis, tendonitis. So you can see it all has to do with the joint. Ankylosing spondylitis, which is in the spine, and acute gouty arthritis. It comes in oral and rectal use. And here's our ibuprofen we've talked a little bit about with our NSAIDs, uh, Motrin, Advil, Naproxen, uh, most commonly used propionic acid category because of its numerous indications, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, primary dysmenorrhea, that's painful menstruation, gout, dental pain, musculoskeletal disorders. I could have written a hundred others in here. It's really anything ibuprofen um, that has an inflammatory uh, condition and which an inflammation causes pain naproxen and I bolded it is the second most commonly used NSAID with an improved reported adverse effect profile over ibuprofen so you know they just make them newer and better both drugs over the counter and in oral form and then I wanted to talk about Toradol here uh, I want you to know about Toradol so circle it whatever you need to do with it it's uh, Keterolac is the name but Toradol it's the only drug of its kind it is classified as a pyrolyzine carbolic acid. It is actually uh, classified as an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory disease, but it has extremely strong, potent analgesic effects. It's comparable to morphine. It's almost only used in orthopedic injuries, uh, and it's also used in opiate addictive patients. Keterolac lacks the addictive properties of the true opioids. So it's a powerful, powerful drug, umbrellaed under NSAIDs, but it acts like morphine. And I gotta tell you uh, guys, I can talk to you a little bit about the story that happened to me, is that um, I was lifting a patient, I never ever hurt myself in my own nursing practice, but I was with a student several years ago, and this uh, patient was really having trouble breathing, so we put the bed down to about 45 degree angle. We should have put it down a little bit more and just moved quicker but we were pulling him uphill. And I never again hurt myself, but when I got home, I could not move my shoulder. The shoulder, uh, I believe it was my left, sh or was it my right? I, I think it was my, I can't remember now, but I think it might have been my right. At any rate, I could not raise my arm, intense pain, like to brush my hair, I could barely brush my teeth. So my husband took me to the ER and they gave me Toradol. And they said, now you need to get right home. And they were going to give it to me if I didn't have a ride home. That's how powerful it is. Here it doesn't have the same properties as morphine, but it acts just like it. Isn't that an awesome drug? If you do have an injury. And I've got to tell you, he gave me a shot of it. It worked like a charm and lasted all night. The next day it was still pretty sore, but I could move my arm. So it is in a class of its own and you need to know about it uh, because it is... Um, not a true opioid at all. It's an NSAID, but it acts like one, and it does not have the properties. It can be given orally or by injection and for eyes, available only by prescription, indicated for short-term up to five days management of acute, moderate to severe pain that requires uh, analgesia at an opioid level. It is not meant for chronic or minor uh, pain conditions. And then we've got our Celebrex, which is another NSAIDs, and here we go. Look what it's indicated for, same things we've all been talking about. Been approved for reduction of colon polyps in patients with an inherited condition known as familial polyposis. 
Other drugs in the same family of Celebrex is Vioxx, Bextra. Um, I think Bextra for sure. I'm not sure about Vioxx. They've been recalled because of severe side effects, blood clots during surgery, myocardial infarctions, CVAs, and deaths. But I believe a Celebrex is still out there. And then our anti-gout drugs, again, we have to get rid of the gout or it causes severe pain. It's targeted at the underlying defect in the uric acid metabolism, which causes either overproduction of um, uh, uric acid, and that's what gout's about, or under-excretion of uric acid if there's a problem in the kidney. And some of those drugs, allopurinol or xyloprim is one of the oldest drugs given for gout. It inhibits the enzyme xanthine oxidase, which prevents uric acid production. It's indicated for patients whose gout is caused by excess production of uric acid. Significant adverse effects include agranulocytosis, aplastic anemia, and exfoliative dermatitis, which is a fatal skin condition. So it can cause problems, but it's, it's a very good drug um, to um, inhibit uric acid production. Colchicine is another anti-gout medication. It's got a weaker anti-inflammatory activity. No effect on the urinary excretion of uric acid and no analgesic activity. It just reduces the inflammatory response of the deposits of the urate crystals in the joint tissue. It inhibits uh, polymorphonuclear leukocyte me metabolism, that's supposed to say, uh, mobility and chemotaxis. Chemotaxis, remember, is a term given for chemical attraction of these cells to the inflammatory site that worsens the inflammatory response. It can cause a low white count, so it's used for short-term acute um, stage and also can cause renal failure. Probenicid and venomid are also anti-gout. Causes the increased excretion of uric acid in the urine by inhibiting its reabsorption by the kidney. So instead of working with products that slow down the uric acid production, it actually works on the excre excrete excretory function of the kidney with gout. I mean, I'm sorry, with uric acid. Um, patients whose gout is produced by an under-excretion of the uric acid, urate crystals form and are not reabsorbed by the kidney. And then uh, probenicid works by binding to a protein in the renal tube that takes uric acid and puts it back into the bloodstream. Probenicid is reabsorbed back into the bloodstream while the uric acid remains in the urine as it, and is excreted. So it's almost like an exchange system there. And then our DeMards finally are, an, it's kind of like an NSAID, it's very long name, disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. They're much more powerful than NSAIDs, so we're gonna use the NSAIDs first. Remember, we're always gonna start with the lower lying one, but it has more uh, severe side effects. It provides anti-inflammatory analgesic properties, slows the disease process associated with arthritis, and three of the most common, azulfidine, Plaquenil, and Embril. They prevent the accumulation of the, our inflammatory cells in the area of a disease joint, thereby slowing the disease process down. Again, these are very strong anti-rheumatoid arthritis drugs. DeMars alters or modifies the disease process of rheumatoid arthritis, but they're not curative. May take up to three to six months for a full therapeutic effect, so people have to take them forever. Um, it also includes arenophen, gold sodium, thiomylate, which is an injection just one time a week, our leflunamide, and our sufficialazine. Educate patients to the adverse effects of these uh, gold products which it can cause um, puritic scratching, dermatitis of the skin, stomatitis, which are sores in the mouth, ulcers of the oral mucous membranes, sore throat, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. And we're gonna end with our, anti, I believe, our anti-anxiety drugs. Our medications are the only one way to help someone who is anxious. Um, they can have, uh, um, it's, I'm sorry, Medications are only one way. Uh, you know, I believe in holistic psychotherapy, exercise, massage, meditation would might be better than putting chemicals in our body. So we really have to offer it. And if you're in this area where we're giving continual anxiety medications, you really need to look at this for our patients. 
All anti-anxiety meds reduce anxiety by reducing overactivity of the central nervous system. So they're going to sedate them somewhat. Our benzodiazepines are the largest group. They have specific receptor proteins in the same areas of the brain that govern the release of our GABA. Remember me talking about um, what the GABA is in the brain. It's the binding of benzodiazepines with these receptors produces less anxiety as well as sedation and muscle relaxation. So it's a whole, it's a whole um, process. And remember, GABA was one of those inhibitory neurotransmitters that we talked about um, this last week in the brain and functions to inhibit nerve transmission in the central nervous system. These are the largest and most commonly prescribed anaolytic drug class because they offer several advantages over other drug class classes used to treat anxiety. Uh, and here's our benzodiazepines. Our Valium or Diazepam, you can see a lot of them in, in PAM, PAM, anxiety and seizures. Ativan is used as pre-op medication for sedation. Alcohol withdrawal for patient recall. Um, Xanax or Alprazolam, Clonopin. Uh, Librium is the one used for alcohol withdrawal more than any of them. Versed is uh, used um, to actually in ventilatory patients to sedate them. In addition to anti-anxiety, these are used for sedation, muscle relaxation, again, to control seizures as adjuvant treatment for depression and also to treat alcohol withdrawal. They're only available in inject or Versed, I'm sorry, is only available in injectable form. They, all the others here are in oral, but except for Versed. And uses a sedative and anesthetic during invasive medical or surgical procedures and moderate sedation during procedures that do not require general anesthesia. And then of course an ICU to control ventilated patients because can you imagine being ventilated and I mean, severe anxiety. T contraindicated um, people for Versed would be anybody that's glaucoma, has pregnant, um, so forth and so on. It has a paradoxical effect, opposite. It'll cause hyperactivity and aggressive behavior. And then our antihistamines. I'm going to let you go ahead and read through those. Most common antihistamine used is Atarax or hydroxazine, hydrochloride, and Vistril. And these are used as anti-anxiety also. Um, and that's it. So I hope I hope this helps, and we will talk about uh, medications also as we go through our uh, pain concept lecture. Hope you guys have a great weekend.